Hello, this is a tutorial on how to do some simple scripting operations for BHOP and surf maps. So to start, I'm going to show you how to add terrain to your map. Uh, in order to put terrain into your map, uh, essentially what you need to do is make a part that fills the area where you want the terrain to be and then add a script inside it that tells the game uh, where to put the terrain. Uh, the reason you can't make terrain like normal using the uh, terrain materials is that essentially the terrain object here must exist inside our workspace. We can't move terrain in here into our model, so we have no way of putting the terrain into our model uh, before it, you know. So in order to get it into the B or surf, so that's why we have to do it uh, in this workaround. All right, so anyways, so I have this part here, and let's say I want to fill this with terrain water. So I put a script inside, which you can do like this. You click the plus object, and then you can type in script, and then I will just click, and then it puts the script in here. So I already entered the script here. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. So um, there is a neat function uh, within terrain that lets us specify a block or a part, and then um, it will fill it with the terrain that we want. Um, so just quick run through how the script works. So workspace at terrain. So this refers to this terrain object, which is under workspace. Uh, fill block, this is the function that we're going to use. And then we do script.parent.cframe. So this is the script. The parent of the script is the part. The dot C frame just tells uh, basically what the C frame object, where its location is, what its orientation is, etc. Uh, script.parent.size, that is the size of the part. Uh, and then enum that material that water. So there's a bunch of different uh, material enumerations. Uh, you can actually find these. I'll link the um, dev or the Roblox dev like article thing. It's got all them in there. So like if I wanted to change this to um, you know rock or something or whatever a different one is, I just simply have to change this. But I want water for now. All right. So this is how the script works. Um, I'm going to make this part transparent so it's invisible and then I'm going to click run here. So if you don't see run, you can click test and then click this drop down and then press run. And then there we go. Voila. There is our water. Isn't that neat? Um, so you can, if you don't want this part to be here, you can make it can collide false. Uh, you, if you do want a, you know, the part to um, be there, you can make it invisible or whatever. It's up to you. Uh, all right. So next, I'm going to show you how to add a skybox to a map. Um, so I have this skybox here, and I already put the skybox stuff in here. Um, so when I move it into lighting, you'll see the skybox changes, and it's got this nice, beautiful skybox. Uh, but in order to get this into our map, uh, we need to put the skybox into our model, right? Because everything has to go into our model. Um, so once it gets into our model, we need a way for when the game runs for the sky to move into lighting. Because the skybox is only going to show up when it's in this lighting uh, service right here. Um, so we can do this really easily with the script. So I'm going to add a script to this. Get rid of this, and then this is just a one line script. So we can say script parent. So this is a similar thing like we did with the terrain. This is referring to our sky object here. And then I'm in order to move this to lighting, I'm gonna actually change the parent of sky. So that's this is effectively the same as uh, moving this object. I'm gonna set to game.lighting. So this refers to this. This is game.lighting script.parent is sky, and I'm going to set the parent of that uh, to game.lighting. Right? It makes sense. So when I hit run here, I'm going to put this inside our model just to show where it would go. I'm going to click run, and then there is our skybox. All right, and then next, I'm going to show you how to change uh, lighting properties. So there's a bunch of different lighting properties. Uh, you can check them by clicking on lighting and viewing properties here. Uh, so there's all these different settings. You can mess around with them. Um, I'll showcase the most important ones. So we've got ambient here. Um, and you can mess around with this, like I said. So I'll show you what this looks like. Ambient essentially changes the way indoor shadows look or shadows casted by parts, um, not casted by the sun. It's 
basically it's indoor shadows so that's the important part so i can make this brighter and you'll see these shadows get uh, brighter so if you have like an indoor area to your map you might want to make this uh brighter uh to make the shadows easier to deal with um so let's say i want to change this to like this value right i'm going to reset back to default just to show how you need to use a script to change it um you've got brightness this changes well the brightness of the sun pretty straightforward um outdoor ambient changes the shadows outside and yeah pretty much that's what it does so this is what it would look like uh and like i said you can mess with all these values uh, all you want um and then there's also fog so let's say i want to add fog to my map uh Fog end changes well where the fog ends. So if I make this really low, you see the fog ends very. Um, there's a lot of fog here because I made the fog end only to 100 studs. Uh, but like if I'm, I can make this a thousand, and there's still a lot of fog here. But if I move fog start back, it won't start for a little while longer. So then the fog's actually much less noticeable unless I go really far out. All right. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna set these back to default. Oops. Uh, and then finally, oh, one more, one more line thing I just want to show is uh, this color shift top. This changes the color of the, uh, the sun essentially. So if I change it to something like yellower, um, you'll see it's got this nice like yellow tint, uh, which is something I use in a lot of my maps. So I want to do that for this map. Um, okay, this value. I'm just gonna copy paste this for now, so I can use it later. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my map here. I'm going to add a script, and you can call it script whatever you want. I'm just going to call it lighting, just so I know what this is doing. And what we're going to do here is first, I'm going to make a variable. I'm just going to call it L, which is short for lighting. I'm going to set this to game.lighting. So this local just declares the scope of the variable. L is the name of the variable, game.lighting. So game.lighting is just long, and I just want to write it in one letter. So this is the only reason I'm doing this. You don't need to make a variable. OK, L dot ambient so this is referring to this ambient value is talking about here this one which changes the shadows a bit um and i want to set this to uh let's say uh 80 80 80 for my rgb value um so the easiest way to do this is you need to type color three and then i use dot from rgb and then this just lets you type the rgb values uh instantly or like you know what I mean? Uh, this is just the RGB values that you want. It'd be exactly the same as the ones you type into here. All right, so I have changed ambient. I want to lower the brightness a little bit. Um, I want to change color shift top to that value I had earlier, which I copy pasted. There we go. Um, yeah, and then if I want to change fog, you know, I could do L dot fog end, or if I want to change any of these values i just do l dot and then whatever the name is here like if i want if i need to change where the um clock or the like where the sun is coming from you can change clock time um and that will move the sun so will geographic latitude for example like i said you can just mess with all these values and you can change them all using the script all right that's the important part all right so gonna undo whatever there we go. Okay, so now when I run this game, it should do all the things I was just talking about. So let's say run. And there we go. You'll see the line change a little bit. The shadows are a little less dark. Uh, looks much nicer overall. Uh, that's all I got. This is busy. You can do any of these line changes or the skybox changes or train changes. Oh, I'll show one more thing. Um, so let's say I have... So this is go back goes back to the terrain. Let's say I have a bunch of terrain, right? I have a bunch of different water objects, and um, I want like I, you know I just have a bunch of different terrain, and I want them all to be the same type of terrain, right? So I could have a script inside each of these parts, but that's kind of redundant since they're all doing the same thing. So what's an easier thing is um, I can use a loop to uh, add the terrain to all these parts simultaneously. So I'm gonna move these to this little folder I made here. I made, I put a folder inside my map. You can do add and then type folder and why. So I put a script in here the script's pretty simple. It's just a for loop. Uh, I loop through 
script that parent to get descendants. So the parent is this folder. Get descendants basically gives me every single object inside here. And then I loop through it uh, and I call each object part. I just do a check to see if each part is a base part because there's a script in here. I don't want to try to mess with, I don't want to try and add terrain to the scripts or whatever because it's going to give me an error. And then I just use the same script that I was using uh, inside the parts and I just modify it to the same part instead of script.parent uh, because that's what we're referring to. And then when I run this, uh, you'll see you have water in each of these different parts, and I don't need an individual script inside each of them. So why does this matter? Um, uh, Quaternions needs to look through each script in every single map uh, in order to check for malicious code. So if you have a bunch of scripts that all do the same thing, it's just really, really, really tedious for them to check. Um, so it'd be a lot nicer if you could, you know, uh, <laughs> simplify things where possible. And this is something that's very easy to simplify. Um, I could put this code in the description uh, if you want. I'll, I'll probably put all the code snippets in the description so that you guys can easily just copy paste them into your map. I think that about does it. That's all I got for you guys. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.